Jubilee. Come on, let's give God some praise on today. Come on, we know he's worthy to be praised on today. He woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Come on, let's give God some praise. Yo. Come on. Everybody say bless, bless, say bless, bless, say bless, bless, say bless. Come on, everybody say bless, bless, say bless, bless, say bless, bless. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed in the sea. Come on, say, oh, come on. We can stand yeah. and sit in the for the devil is. We are, you ready? Since thou hast walked the right land, is a light in a dark land. I always first in my heart, oh, the Lord to man. He set thee above nations and cast thine enemies away. He said,
situation around for us. Sometimes you have to step out on your faith and say, God, I know night in my midnight hour. You're going to turn it around. Y'all ready? Hey, telling you that God will. It's going to work. Oh, yeah. of the Lord and to encourage our brothers and our sisters this morning in worship. Are you excited about that? Come on, just clap your hands for the Lord if you're excited about that. Come on, we didn't come into this place to be dead. We've come into this place to celebrate the victory and the victories that we have not even experienced. We've come to celebrate them in advance. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, we dare not come into this place without sharing Jesus. Whatever social media platform you're on, take out your phones and let's share Jesus this morning. If you're not on any social media platforms, encourage someone's heart this morning. Maybe you know someone that's sick and in the hospital. Someone's experiencing grief this morning. Many, many families are going through. Just text something. Share the love of Jesus. It's about being kind and sharing God's love. Is that right? That's why he put us on this place. Let's encourage someone's heart. I know the Lord can drop someone in your spirit and say, just encourage them. Sis, I love you. Brother, I love you. I'm praying for you. It's going to get better. Can we speak that? Well, come on. It only takes a few moments. Come on and celebrate and clap your hands for the Lord. We're excited to encourage someone's heart. Someone might need to encourage you one day. Well, the next thing we do is encourage one another. Can we do that as a family? Can we just go around this sanctuary? Let's take some selfies. Let's smile at each other. Let's greet each other with a hug. Let them know I'm excited to see you in worship this morning. Let's do it.
Jubilee, put those hands together. Thank you for greeting your brother and your sister. But let's get in place. We need to take this service higher. We need to set the atmosphere for the Lord to move. It's already set, but we need to set it for him to take it higher. Come on, we're going to set it for him to go higher in the Lord. So as we get back in place, come on and just clap your hands just one more time. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Well, at this time, our elder is going to come and give us our scripture and to pray. Praise the Lord this morning. I'll be reading and I'm hearing this morning Proverbs, the third chapter, five and the sixth verse. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful this morning for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. God, we thank you this day for Palm Sunday. As God, as we remember what you did for us, God, we just thank you for everything you've done for us. God, this whole week, let us be thankful for how you shed your blood for us, how you died on the cross for us. God, you suffered so just for us. And God, we just thank you. And as we lift you up today in this service, God, we pray that the Holy Spirit have the right of way in this place today. God, bless us in this place today. Bless your preach word today. Bless those that sing today, God. God, we just thank you for every phase of this service. Every person, every family that's gathered here, God, don't let us leave the same way that we came, but let us leave better. Let us leave wiser. Let us leave stronger in the name of Jesus. And God, we be mindful to get your name to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, Jubilee, put those hands together. Are you ready to take the service higher? Are you ready to give the Lord some praise? At this time, you are called to worship. Whatever situation you face in your life, you can take it to Jesus in prayer. What? Come on, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is. Have we tried? Precious Savior.
But we should never be discouraged. So sweet, can we say again? All we have to do is just take it to. All of us begin, all of the people begin to worship. So much. I know so much. 
Come on, come on, say he's proving himself. More than just
Come on, church. I can't doubt. Come on, I can't hear y'all loud enough. I can't doubt him. No, no, no. Woo! That's my favorite. Every time I turn around, he keep doing great things. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, open your mouth. I can't. I can't doubt him. He keeps healing my body. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Oh, I can't. He keeps bringing me through hard times. Every time I turn around, I can't. I showed up this morning because I've been way low, but I can't doubt him. Woo! Hey, I can't. That's why I praise him like I do. I, oh, he's picked me up. And he's turned me around. I, 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 I. Hold on, let's go through the cool part. He my joy. Peace. I thought y'all come to have church. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not going to mess with my joy. Somebody ought to do a step side to side. My joy. Y'all, where y'all at? Some of y'all. Somebody and tell him he's my joy, peace, everything I cannot. Come on, sing on somebody. He's my joy, peace, everything. You don't know what I've been through. Come on, somebody said my joy. I need a church in him. My joy, my peace. You don't know what he's done for me. Every time I turn around, my joy, everything. Y'all got me in the aisle by myself. Y'all got me in the aisle by myself. Y'all ought to be straight. My joy, peace, everything. Come on, I thought y'all come to heaven. I'm going to leave this church alone. My, 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 my. Peace. Every, in the midnight hour. In the morning time. My, 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 my joy. Peace. Every praise of me. I can't. No music. Let the church say. Voices. My joy. Peace. Every I cannot. He's protecting me, provided for me. Come on, open your mouth, my joy. Peace. You don't know like I know. No, 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 no. My joy. Peace. I cannot. Every time I call him, every time I need don't know what he's done for me much that's why I came I want him to know he's everything I need my joy yeah yeah when depression tried to get me down but oh he's my joy oh lord oh thank you one more time, I'm gonna leave y'all alone. He's my.
One more time, make it big. My joy, my peace. Come on and praise him in here. Come on and praise him in here. Come on and praise him in this place. Oh my. Lord, have mercy. Ooh, Lord. Yes, he is. Tell, look over to your neighbor and say, yes, he is. Tell somebody, yes, he is. Oh my, please be seated if you can. Oh my. He's everything to me. Yes, Lord, you don't know what I've been through. Uh, you don't know what I'm going through. Tell somebody, you don't know where I am right now. But he's my joy. He's my peace. He's everything to me. Oh, Lord. Everything. Somebody just lift your voice and shout everything. Look down your road, tell your neighbor he's everything, 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 everything. He's been a bridge over troubled water. Woo! I feel like hollering at air. He's been my everything. Yeah. Lord have mercy. All right, I'm gonna leave you alone. Will you? If you just help me shout, he's my everything. Do it like old preacher. He my everything. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, everything, everything. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, and I'm going on, and y'all stop. Take a water break. But tell somebody, he's been better to me than I've been to myself. He's been better. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. Oh, yes, he has. Woo. Better, better, better. He's been a better doctor than my doctor. He's been a better lawyer than my lawyer. He's been a better friend. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, all right. Let me pull myself together. Tell your neighbor, what would I do without him? Who would I be without him? Where would I go without it? Take the Lord God with you. Everywhere. Well, praise God on this Palm Sunday. Amen. If the church can't get loud, then we can't. I ain't going to never let the world beat me at not hollering, not dancing, not doing nothing. I ain't gonna never dance better at your wedding than I do in church. Uh-uh, I ain't gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, we welcome you to the Jubilee Church where the Lord is the head of our lives and we honor you and we welcome you to the Jubilee Church this morning. And we are grateful that God has allowed us one more time to come into his house. Just one more time. I'm excited to be here one more time. It might be my last time, but I'm glad to be here just one more. Glad to praise him with y'all one more. Glad to see you one more.
tell you, baby, we got one more time to praise it. Don't know what tomorrow holds, but I got one more time. I don't know what to, I don't know if I'm going to make it to Wednesday, but I got one more time. One more, one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of honor. Tell somebody in the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Tell your neighbor, he's strong and mighty. Oh my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know we're a little loud early, but Lord Jesus, he's been good to me. Sometimes I can't hold my peace, y'all, when I think of all that he's done for me. When I think about woulda, coulda, shoulda. <laughs> Woo! When I think about it and look back over my life, things are better than they, than they could be. So I praise him today. Amen. You may be seated. This is his house. Amen. And we are excited to be here. One thing I know is weeping may endure for a night. It don't mean that weeping's going to endure because it say it might, it may. But just in case it does. Tell somebody joy is about to knock on my door. Healing is about to knock on my door. Restoration is about to knock on my door. We welcome those that are watching us today through uh, our virtual platforms today. We welcome you. Can you celebrate those that are watching? Some are out of town. Some are experiencing some setbacks but can you clap your hands and celebrate them for watching come on celebrate them we thank god for you and we hope to see you soon amen in the sanctuary amen i don't know about you but i'll bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make my soul shall make its boast in the lord the humble shall hear it and be glad of it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, God, tell your neighbor, will you bless the Lord with me? Well, we honor the Lord today and thank you for being a part of our congregation today. And we're so grateful that all that have joined us uh, in our service live here and then those that are watching us today. We're certainly praying for so many families that have experienced uh, death in the family, loss of a loved one. Sister Sonoma had an aunt to go home be with the Lord. Brother Derek uh, Burns had an uncle to go home. Sister Angela Henry uh, had a nephew and an uncle to go home in the same week. Amen. So they're there in Tennessee. And, uh, for all of those in the recent weeks, uh, before now and then those weeks that are ahead of us. Amen. But God will be our strength. Come on, lift your hands and say, God, you will be our strength. Amen. I honor the Lord and thank God for all of our leaders and our deacons and thank God for all of those that step up uh, when those uh, that have to be out are out. Amen. Well, I praise God for our deacons and our elders and our ministers and intercessors, our urshers, our deacons, those that teach. Amen. I thank God for them today. Would you clap your hands for those guys? We honor you today. You know, give our musicians a hand. Them guys. Man, those guys. Thank God for them. We got a great team over there and they just work hard at what they do and I thank God for their leadership and their dedication number one to God number two to the Jubilee Church amen 
Well, I'm so grateful for my family today. I believe they all have made it. Amen. I thank God for my daughters. Amen. They are grown and they could be gone. Amen. Amen. But I thank God they still want to come and fellowship with this church. Amen. A church that they was uh, seven and eight, eight or nine when they got here. Amen. And they could be so mad at the church by now that they never want to come back. Amen. They could be so hurt by now. But I thank God that they are here. Amen. And uh, thank God for my son that continues to push me. Amen. I thank God for him. Amen. And then I thank God for the queen of the family, my wife. Amen. I thank God for her. Amen. I celebrate the woman of God. Amen. How she pushed all of us. Amen. And I thank God for her. Amen. Nothing like a great woman. Amen. And all of you guys are great. Amen. I thank God for you. Here we are in uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, this is Palm Sunday. And uh, this morning I want to walk through uh, I'll walk through Palm Sunday, if you would allow me to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I want to walk us through, so if you have your Bibles, I want you to grab, grab your Bibles today, and uh, let's, let's just walk, let's just take a little journey uh, through Palm Sunday. It's such an awesome time of the year for believers, amen? I say it is such an awesome time. For believers, don't let anybody make you shame. Amen. It is the holy month for, rump, for 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 Muslims, and they at church every night. Amen. I pass by the mosque every night. Amen. Okay, I'm, I'm I'll dismiss the youth now, since they like. Okay, he not gonna say nothing. I'm out of here. Okay. <laughs> amen. But all of our youth age 12 to 17. Amen. They didn't want to wait on me. I got it in my notes to let y'all go, but y'all gone. Bye. <laughs> Amen. Age 12, 17. We're excited about those guys. Come on, clap and holler for them. Come on, clap and holler for them. Yeah, they can hear you down the hall. We're so excited about them. And today is Youth Church. Amen. And they have a great service planned for them in our student center. And I'm excited about those guys. Amen. I am. I am. If you have a child that would love to go to Children's Church, amen, one of our urchins would be glad to lead you to our check-in and get them on in there amen that's what we're doing we want our kids uh to know who jesus is amen next week dress them up real pretty because we're gonna have a children's parade and they're gonna come down that i'll go up that one go back down that one go up that one go back down that one go up that one go back down and go up that one till we tell them to stop <laughs> amen we're gonna have a good time next week lord jesus but we're gonna have a good time today uh Praise God for it. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let me do it. Okay. Uh, if, can I tell Deron something real quick? That, that ain't none of y'all business. If you would, let's, let's run over to Mark, the 11th chapter. I got 11 verses I'm going to read there, and then we're going to walk through Palm Sunday, because you'd be surprised how many Christians don't really know what's going on when it comes to resurrection. You don't know, except you'd be taught. So I want to take a little moment this, this morning and just walk us through Palm Sunday. I know we hear it. Make sure you 5G, amen, so you can keep up with me, amen, if you're 3G, or I think Androids can keep up, I don't know why y'all trying to defend yourself, I just said I think, if, 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 if they can't just Look over to your neighbor that, that has an iPhone. It's, it's okay. It's all right. It, it's okay. It's all right. 
me. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with nothing, you know. I'm just, I'm trying to help somebody. I don't want you to miss nothing. Now, you Android users, don't come up to me after service trying to show me how fast it is. <laughs> Luke, <clears throat> Mark, the level chapter. Bread of life. Sit down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, bread of life, sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter, but you are bread of life. Sent down from glory. Many things you are on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. But you, awesome ruler, Gentile redeemer. God with us, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. Awesome ruler, Gentile redeemer, God with us. What a friend we have in you. You are the living word, yeah. Somebody help me call him. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. <laughs> Manger born. But on a tree. Humanity. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. You were made born, but on a tree you died to save humanity. You, Jesus. That's what I call you, manger born, you died, y'all got to get a little louder, I call him, I call him Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. You were made born, but on a tree you died to save humanity. You were.
That's what we call you. Thank you, Jesus. You were manger born. But on a tree, you died to save you, man. You say you're the living word you're the living word you're the living word yeah you're the living word that's why I showed up this morning you're the living word oh yeah you're the living word thank you Jesus you're the living word. Somebody call him Jesus, Jesus, and we out. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's manger born. But on a tree, you died to save you man. Mark, yeah. Can we call his name one more time? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Somebody can get healed right through there. You were made your born. You died. One more time, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I call you in the morning, I call you in the noonday. I call you when the sun go down. You were made. You died to say. And you are the living word, yeah. You're the living word. Live in me, live in me. You're the living word. Uh, somebody just lift your voice and say, You're the living word. You're the living word. Hey, hey, you're the living word. They tried to kill you, but you're the living word. Hey, you're the living word. That go for all of y'all. Hey. Just look at somebody and say, he's the living word. Mark the eleventh chapter. Woo -wee. The Bible declares uh, in Mark the eleventh chapter. Yeah, he's the living word. In the beginning. Lord have mercy. I don't want to go over there. We might start dancing and shouting. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, Bethany, and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. Uh, 
And he said to them, go into the village opposite you. And as soon as you have entered it, you will find a goat tied on which no one has set. Loose it and bring it. Tell somebody God's trying to loose you so he can use you. The reason the enemy got you tied up Lord, I can stop and preach right there. Let me keep moving. You know when you're a preacher, you can see something everywhere. Lord Jesus. If you're bound, you just got to know God want to use you. <laughs> That's why the devil keep entangling you. Because he know when you get free. He know when you get free, somebody ain't talking to me. That's why you just sitting quiet because you say, well, when I... No, he, the devil already knows you, go, you a weapon. Oh, God. Yeah, that's why he keeps turning you around in circles and cycles. He just already knows when you get loose, you're going to be something else because you were something else for the devil. Don't, don't you know God wants to use you even more than the devil used you? How many of the devil used you real good? Come on. I know some of y'all ain't going to admit it, but the devil used you real good. Come on, he used you real good. You done some stuff, you look back now and say, oh, Lord, why in how in the world did I do that? I took that woman's husband. How in the world did I? Come on, y'all not going to tell the truth, but y'all in here. Let me keep moving. Saints don't want even praise God. God don't need no secret service. Don't nobody need that but the president. <laughs> yeah. Let me finish reading. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. Bring, <laughs> loose it and bring it. Verse 3 says, oh, Lord. Y'all apologize, I forgot my confession again. I got it here on my notes, but we're going to walk through this. <laughs> it's the musician's fault. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it. And immediately, he will send it here. Jesus sends two of his disciples to go and get a donkey, a coat, so he can ride. He does not send them to get a horse because when you ride in on the horse, it says wartime. Jesus rides in on a coat or a donkey because it speaks of peace. It speaks of who he is was it speaks of his purpose verse 4 says so they went their way and found that found the coat tied to the door outside on the street and they loosed it but some of those who stood there said to them what are you doing loosen the coat. And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded them. So they let them go. Jesus already gave them the answer. If they ask you what you need it for, just tell them I need it. Verse 7 says, then they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their clothes on it. And he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. They cut down palm branches. That's why we call it Palm Sunday. Verse 9 says, 
Then those who went before and those who followed cried out. Y'all can't be quiet today. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem, into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. For the next few minutes, I just want to talk from the subject, the greatest entry of all time. The greatest entry of all times. The greatest entry of all time. When, when we see uh, the Palm Sunday recorded, it is recorded in all four of the Gospels. Matthew records it in Matthew 21, 1 through 11. Mark records it in Mark 11, 1 through 11. Luke records it in Luke 19, 28 through 44, John records it in John 12, 12 through 19. And as we look at uh, Palm Sunday, it marks the beginning of Holy Week. Uh, it's so significant, significant to us who are believers in Christ. It is the week before before Easter. We've been celebrating it for a minute. Now, now the events of Palm Sunday took place during uh, the Jewish festival of Passover. Now Jerusalem is crowded with pilgrims. Jesus had been in Galilee. And he is now making his way to Jerusalem for the last time. Jesus now knows that his crucifixion is very near. But there are some things that has to happen. Uh, if, if you would, just follow me over to Old Testament. Zechariah, the ninth chapter. The prophet Zechariah had already prophesied how he would come in, how you would know who he is. One problem that the Jews had is they did not recognize him, even though the Lord had told them and given them all the clues that they needed. They still did not accept Jesus as the Messiah. That, that's what's really going on today. They still didn't receive him as the Messiah. They kept looking whew, for someone else. Why, why do you keep Looking, searching, and looking. Why, why are your ears still itching? Some, some folks just keep looking and searching. We got to be so careful. All right, I'll, I'll get past that. Let me read, let me read, let me read Zechariah, the ninth chapter, verse 9. It says, Rejoice. Greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a coat, the foal of a donkey. He, 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 the prophet announces to Jerusalem, announces to uh, the Jews, how he would come in. It's not like they didn't know it. How, how many have ever known but you didn't accept? So many of us have known Jesus is the Savior, but sometimes we don't accept him. It takes year after year, trial after trial, tribulation after tribulation before I just say, you know what? Let me go on and trust him. The events of Palm Sunday took place during uh, the Jewish festival. 
Jesus had been in Galilee. If, you, uh, if you're following me in the Bible, you will see right before that, Jesus heals blind Bontimaeus. Right after that, Jesus curses in Mark's gospel. Jesus uh, curses the fig tree. But we see here in Zechariah what we see in Mark, which is a fulfillment of prophecy. Here, the gospel highlights that Jesus' entry into Jerusalem is fulfilled in Zechariah, the ninth chapter, in the ninth verse. Jesus now has a triumphal entry. Jesus instructs his disciples to go and fetch a coat which he rode on into Jerusalem. The crowd welcomes Jesus by spreading their cloaks and palm branches on the road, which now uh, is a gesture of honor and royalty. They recognize what's going on. The crowds recognize his messiahship and his kingship. We got to be so careful when we don't recognize. Watch what the crowd begins to say and what the crowd begins to respond. The crowd now is shouting because there are some that read and believed. But there were some that were supposed to believe didn't believe. What happens when you're supposed to believe and you don't believe? What happens when you, kept, when you keep just living your own kind of way? When you know to do right? Anybody ever done that like me? Okay, well, don't get quiet right there. Just holler out, yeah. Yeah, me too, Reverend. I, I know to do good, but I ain't do it. How many of y'all in here, I ain't do it? I ain't do it. I ain't do it. I, I, knew, I knew to do right, but I didn't do it. Yeah, I, I didn't do it. I, I, knew, I knew to do right, but I didn't do it. I, I, I had all the signs. I heard the preacher preach. Somebody told me on TikTok to do good. I still didn't do it. I saw it on Facebook. I didn't do it. I saw it on Instagram, but I still didn't. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. All right. I, I must have a lot of I didn't do it still in here. Yeah, I didn't do it. I ignored it. I overlooked it. I, 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 I asked God for his grace again. Okay, I'll get past there. Church folks don't like you to, they don't want you to say nothing to them. So let me keep, let me keep preaching. I didn't do it. Where y'all at? I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Okay, since y'all won't raise your hand, the Bible says all have sinned. So you can't get past that all if you don't raise your hand or not. If you don't witness or not, you can't get past that all. Because all means Everybody on your roll, even if they don't look at you and give witness, you, you ain't have to say nothing. They almost a hypocrite here in a minute. So the Bible says that Jesus now instructs uh, his disciples to fetch a coat, which he rode on into Jerusalem. The crowds is welcoming him. There's pandemonium everywhere because he has the greatest entry of all time. The Bible says that they threw their clothes off and they grabbed palm branches so the coat or the donkey could walk on because now uh, they want to honor royalty. And, 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 and I told you just a minute ago, uh, the donkey is a great symbol of peace because in the military, they would, the conquerors would ride in on a horse. So Jesus says, I don't want nobody to get my entry mixed up. I, 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 so go and find me a donkey. A donkey speaks of peace. When you ride a horse in, a horse speaks of war. Jesus says, I don't want nobody to get this mixed up. Because I'm, I'm, I'm in my purpose now. I know why I'm here. I know why I came, and I'm getting ready to do what I'm supposed to do. He chooses the donkey because he has peaceful intentions. 
He don't want to come in like a military conqueror. He wants to come in like a loving savior. Jesus weeps over Jerusalem in Luke because of the destruction due to its rejection of him as the Messiah. What would Jesus weep over America now? Is Jesus weeping over America now? Is Jesus weeping over the church now? Oh, God. Is, is Jesus, have, 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 have we forgotten our purpose of church? Or is church now a place you go to and it's got more world in it than worship? People get enough of the world. Everything that we do in here should be pointed to Jesus. You, you, you shouldn't come to church and, and stay in there all the time and his name is never mentioned. That's why I had to call Jesus, Jesus. That's okay. Tell somebody you got to call his name. We ought to hear his name all around the sanctuary. Nobody ought to not have to tell us to call his name. Healing's in his name. Salvation's in his name. We used to sing old Pentecostal song, Jesus, what's his name? 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 Can't nobody clap like that but Roz. That's how she grew up. She didn't miss a beat. Y'all see that? I was off, but she was on. But we made sure that Jesus was the center of attraction. Because at the end of the day, I can't help you. I got my own stuff. Can't nobody help you but Jesus. I can pray for you. I can listen to what you're going through. But at the end of the day, I must tell Jesus. All of my trials, trials, I cannot bear. I didn't see you. These burdens alone. I ain't trying to sing, y'all, but in my some of y'all old folks remember that. That's okay. Jesus will guide me. Anybody? Some of y'all trying to tell me. I'll, I'll pray for you, but I must tell. Jesus, Jesus alone. Y'all got to stop telling everybody your problem. Y'all keep listening to everybody. Folks that ain't been talking to Jesus, I ain't telling them nothing, and I got to know you've been talking to him. Let me get on that. That, that was a sidebar there, a side. Jesus now weeps over Jerusalem in Luke 19. Because... Anytime you don't accept Jesus, then there's always going to be destruction. That, that's, in, that's, in, that's in whatever you do. People can ignore Jesus. People can ignore the church. But at the end of the day, they're going to need Jesus. People can lead you through all kind of different religions, religions that ignore Jesus as the Messiah, ignore Jesus as Savior. They only lead you down a path of destruction. Because the Bible says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto thee. The Bible says every knee shall bow. It don't matter if you believe it or not. 
every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I, I don't care what philosophy you have. I don't care what your religion is. That's what the Bible says. And if I'm going to believe the Bible, I'm going to believe all of it. I'm not going to believe the part that just makes me feel good. That's what's wrong with the church today. But I need the part that tells me how nasty I am. I need the part of the Bible that tells me how wrong I am. How ugly I am. How mean I am. How sick I am. I need help. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need help. Lord, if they didn't look at you, they really need help. You ought to go and call 911 right now. But there's some help that 911 can't help you with. I challenge folks before you call 911, you ought to call Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. One time I got so busy trying to tell everybody what I was going through and I had never talked to Jesus. Even though he knew what I was going through, he just wanted me to tell him what I was going through. So now I don't say much to folks. I just talk to him. Because I found out just a little talk with Jesus. Will make everything all right. I found out he may not come when I want him. Hold on to run. But he's always. I said always. He might seem late to you, but he's always. Oh God, all right. So so we we see we see now uh, a Palm Sunday. We see we see things and events that has happened now. Jesus now is, is headed to the cross. And as we prepare to celebrate resurrection next week, or we celebrate Easter next week, this is the holy week. Now when Jesus walks, rides in on a donkey because of his humility, because of his mission of peace, and because of his ultimate sacrifice for you and for me. I'm looking at Palm Sunday all week, and as I looked at it, the only thing I could really see was love. That, that's all I could see is how much he loved us. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting, everlasting life. So I began thanking God for his love. I know we, we thank him for cars and houses and husbands and wives and children and food on our table and waking us up this morning. But I just stopped to thank him for his love. Because it was love that lifted me when nothing else could help I thought I had some old folks in here but I don't know if they sleep or not but that song should have woke them up it was love that lifted me y'all don't remember it yeah we used to sing love lifted me I want them to sing it love it me when nothing else could help love lifted me yeah. love lifted me love lifted me when Enough. Love. We do it like this. Lifted me. Oh Lord, Elder got the God gave his son when nothing else could help. And that's all I could see doing Palm Sunday. 
I, I, I know, I know, I know that th this is the Bible. And I know we come to church for so much entertainment now to sometimes we miss the Bible. Sometimes we caught up trying to give you a 20-minute sermon so you can get out and go and do nothing. I just need to walk you through this word. Because I can give you a 15-minute sermon and... I mean, I could. I've done it. But can I walk us through here? Here's my first point. The fulfillment of prophecy. God has, even when we look in Revelation, everything that's happening now, it don't surprise us because it's already in the Bible. When I watch CNN and when I watch the news, it's already being, the, the, the Bible is just, being fulfilled. None of this stuff surprises God. Donald Trump does not surprise God. Joe Biden does not surprise God. What the world is going through now does not surprise God. The Bible says that there will be wars and rumors of wars. So none of this surprises us. That's why we used to say, get right, church, and let's go home. We, we got to be prepared, and folks still living their lives like the Bible is not fulfilling itself. We don't know when he's coming, but he's on his way back, y'all. Even I know we're getting ready to celebrate the eclipse, and we're getting, but the Bible talks about all of these strange things that will begin to happen. And every time I come to church, it reminds, it reminds me that I need to get myself right. Because I don't know if I have tomorrow. Putin says, try me if you want. I got World War. Wait, I ain't trying to scare you. Don't be scared. It's nothing to be afraid about. Because they taught me as a kid that little song, he got the whole world. Okay, I ain't trying to sing it. Y'all sing too much. Y'all gonna have to stop all of that singing. He got mama and daddy. Yeah, in his hand. Mama and daddy, he's got, so we as, as believers, we can never let what happens in the world shake us. Because we know God. See, some of y'all know church. You got to know God. People in church will let you down. Because they people. They got situations, they got problems, they got struggles, but God will never let you down. Some of y'all know more about me than you know about God. Error. Keep going. So, number one, there's the fulfillment of prophecy. As we celebrate Palm Sunday, it is the fulfillment of prophecy which is said that the king would come riding on a coat. Amen. And then we see Palm Sunday, we see the response of the crowd. Good God Almighty, let me walk through here. The response of the crowd. The crowd welcomes Jesus with shouts of Hosanna. The, the non-religious folks and some of the religious folks go crazy because they know what's happening. These people are now going crazy because Jesus is riding on the donkey. Jesus fulfills the prophecy to reveal his identity. Keep moving. But look at the response of the crowd. Let me say this to you. When people find out who you really are, When you find out when you who you really are, it makes the devil mad. Jesus comes riding on the donkey. People begin to cry out, Hosanna. 
People go to running, pulling palm, uh, palm leaves off the tree, laying them down so the donkey don't have to touch the ground because the king is riding in. Can I stop and tell you something? Can I just do something to the side? When you come into your real purpose, when you come into who you really are, okay, some people that make them mad. You can tell who your real enemies are at work, just get a promotion. Okay, y'all don't believe it. The devil don't really fight you until you know your worth and until you know who you are. He, he's not attracted to you till you know who you are. Listen, Jesus rides in and reveals his identity and it makes some people happy and it makes some people mad. Look at your name and say, everybody's not going to be excited about who you really are. See, people don't want you to really know who you are in Christ because when you know who you are in Christ, they already know can't nothing stop you. That's the reason when you walk in the room, well, okay, let me get a pile. I don't want, I don't want, uh, watch out, watch this. People get mad when other people celebrate you. When you walk in the room and everybody is saying, oh, hi, Erica, how are you today? Oh, hi, Erica. Oh, there's Erica. It's going to make some folks mad. Oh, God. Y'all ain't never experienced that. Well, keep living. Walk into your purpose. And when you go in the room, when people start respecting you, when people start saying, oh, do you know him? Do you know this guy? Do you know Barry? Do you know, do you know? Barry, Arnold, <laughs> when people start introducing you and folks don't know who you are, people get mad because other people like you. People get mad because God has given you a great personality. I'll come down here since y'all quiet and looking at me like I ain't telling the truth. People get mad because they can see when people, watch this, when people begin to see God's glory on your life, God's anointing on your life, you haven't even recognized it yet, but the devil can recognize it. Good God Almighty. When you know how to walk in, when you've been in prayer, when you know God's word, when you know no weapon formed against you shall prosper. People will get jealous of you, and you don't even have to have the position. You don't even have to have the title. Oh, God. How many ever been working for somebody that got jealous of you? Come here, David. Come here, Saul. Testify. You got to be so careful when you've been under the glory. When you've been in here finding out who you really are. When you've been in here talking about God, I worship you. I belong to you. I'm yours, Lord. You got to watch it because you'll go to work. And folks will start just uh, gravitating to you. I don't know what they're gravitating to her because she ain't nothing. Yeah, wait a minute. You can come to church. Folks will get mad at you. Your dress from Walmart, theirs from Neiman, but you'll look better in yours. You'll be, you look better in George than they do in Neiman. Because it ain't about what you got on. It's about who's on the inside of you. And he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I'm his own. No matter where I am, my head is up. My shoulders are squared. I might not have everything I need, but God is with me. What happens here in the text? Jesus knew it was his time. But you can't really get to the cross until you have some enemies. <laughs> Tell somebody, you can't really get to where you need to be until you have some betrayers. Oh, okay. Let me get away from there. Say something make y'all happy. Lord, have, have mercy. See, it's your influence. The supervisor will call you to the side and say, I just want to ask you what you think. 
Yeah. That's how you know God's working with you. You don't even make the money, but you, you, your sister make way more money than you do. But you got more peace. You got more joy. You got more happiness. You got more everything because money ain't everything. What you drive ain't everything. You can drive a Rolls Royce, but you, if you can't sleep at night, I need Jesus. All right? The devil tells somebody the devil's after your influence. Yeah, you, you, can, be, you can be the low man on the totem pole. But God can have everybody circled around you. And folks that think they, people ought to be gravitating to them, they'll start gravitating to you. And you don't even have a title. You, you're not even the one that, that, that they're supposed to be really talking to. But they keep coming to you. Anybody, y'all ain't never experienced that. And ain't none of y'all in this place. When you find out who you are, you don't worry. Everybody wants a seat at the table. Don't want a seat at the table. Be the table that other folks want to sit around. I don't need no seat at the table. I am the table. Some folks don't like you just because you in the room. They don't think you ought to be in the room. Oh, God. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, buddy, it's my time. Yeah, come on, tell somebody, but it, it's my time. See, you don't know what I went through to get here. I made up my mind, I ain't missing no Bible study, I ain't missing no Sunday morning, I ain't making no excuse for God, and the Lord has elevated me. Jesus is getting ready to be elevated, but it don't look like it. <laughs> yeah, tell somebody, he's, he's getting ready to go through the process of elevation. And, 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 and if you can't go through the process of elevation, Part of the process is people denying you. So if you got Judas in your life, you ought to be happy if he done showed up. Has Judas showed up in anybody's life? You ought to be shouting today. <sighs> okay, let me finish up, y'all. We got to get out of here early today. It's Palm Sunday. But, but here, number one, the fulfillment of prophecy. And I've been reading it all week. I read it in each one of the Gospels. The response of the crowd. You got to watch it because what really makes the enemy mad is when the crowd responds to you. You don't have to advertise yourself. The crowd will advertise you. Tell somebody you don't have to say nothing. They'll be talking about you. Do you know so-and-so? Do you know that young lady? She just started on the job. Who is she? People be talking about, who is she? Okay, all right, here I am. Here is number three, the true nature of Christ's kingship. Philippians 2, 5 through 11 describes how Jesus, though being God, humbled himself and became obedient to death on the cross, showing his sacrificial love, sacrificial love for humanity. Jesus never lifted himself up. You, you can, when you know who you are, you never have to lift yourself up. Be weary of people that's always trying to lift themselves up. Because you don't have to do it. Everything, any, 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 all the ways that God has blessed me, I ain't never tried to lift myself up. I ain't never asked to be on no platform. I ain't never asked to do, I ain't never asked to. Because I want to be where God wants me. Because there's some doors you can force your way in and you'll have to force your way out of. There's some doors you can force your way in and there's a price that you have to pay. Ask Hollywood. I want to be where God wants me to be. The nature of Christ's kingship. He knew who he was. And that's one thing you got to do. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. If y'all don't know who I am, I know 
who I am. I might not have what you have. I might not drive what you drive. I might not have the title you have. I might not have the degree you have. But I know who I am. And I know whose I am. Tell somebody, you got to know who you are. Because if you don't know, then the devil will always hang a title on you. He got some titles, y'all. That's why we got to tell our children who they are. We got to tell our young man, you not, that's not you. Most of the time we get in trouble because we don't know who we are. I told my son, I told my daughters, I say, number one, we believers. Number two, y'all drinks. I don't care what nobody say, you a drink. You don't, you don't, you don't do that. You don't post that. You don't post the middle finger. You don't post one and you sure don't post two. I scared y'all, huh? How I'm going to scare you? Your kids got it posted. <laughs> I remember when my girls would repost something and my wife would get, I see on that phone, my wife got them 15 year old Texan fingers. And they would try to explain, mama, I didn't say it. She said, yes, you did say it and you reposted it. You saw it, it's something about it you liked and you reposted, you did say it. I didn't say it, Mom. I just reposted it. She said, if you reposted it, you said it. And they tried to philosophize and go back and forth. Look at me, Simone. Look at me real good. I don't know why she's not no lawyer. If you repost cussing, that's what you're saying. And I see some of y'all be posting cussing, re, re, reposting cussing. You know what them letters mean. Don't act like you don't know. You might not know what some symbols in the Bible is, but you know what W. You know what it means. You just want to say it, but you're saying it on a slick way. I ain't scared of none of y'all. And I'm like, man, she was shouting at church Sunday. What the world happened between Sunday and Thursday? The Bible say don't let your good be evilly spoken of. That's so easy. It's too easy. Just put out there like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And let somebody figure that out. All right, move on. The irony of the cross, and as we celebrate this Palm Sunday, his triumphal entry with shouts of praise and adoration stands in the stark contrast to the events of Good Friday when Jesus would be crucified. It reminds us of the depth of Jesus' love and his sacrifice he made for our salvation. I said many years, you've heard me say, this ought to be the week that the saints turn up for real. This, this ought to be the week that we share Christ like we've never shared him. This ought to be the week that we say, listen, if you're not going to church Sunday, listen, my church will reserve a seat for you and your whole family. Because we want you there. There'll be many people that will walk in this place next Sunday. And some of us that come every Sunday will be looking at them like they just here because it's Easter. Well, okay, so? You came one Easter and God saved you. That's the only reason you in here. I ain't nothing wrong with that. Don't come here. It's too crowded. They all taking up all the seats. First come, first serve. If you ain't here early, your seat going to be taken. And you don't ask nobody out of no seat because you ain't got none. You just go sit wherever there's a seat. Don't be telling the air, that's my seat. You ain't got no seat. 
Only seat you got is the one you get here and sit er get here early for. That's the only seat you have. They was talking into my meeting the other day. They said, what about the front row? I said, I don't like no empty front row. Fill it up. If we got elders and ministers that can't get here before 10, they don't need to be up here. Put me some sinners on the front row. If I got some empty seats up here, don't never be afraid to come to the front. When I walk in places, you know what I say? Y'all got anything up front? I ain't scared. Why y'all think I get to sit at the front? I'll ask for the front. Y'all got anything up front? Yeah, come on. We got two left. <laughs> and that's how I'll be walking up. My wife be like, why you want to go way up there? I don't care. <laughs> them, people, them people been waiting on me to come in there. God woke me in them two seats. And I go in like, hey. <laughs> Tell somebody I'm a upfront person. Number five, our response to Jesus as King. How do we respond to Him as King? How do I bow down to Him? How grateful am I because of this Holy Week and what He done? How how do I worship Him this week? How do I tell people about, man, if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. How can I be a witness this week? And, and, and how can you text your whole family and say, hey, guys, I want all y'all to come. You know the ones that don't go to church. Don't be acting like you don't know nobody that don't go to church. We know a whole lot of people that don't go to church. And, it, and it's not that they don't want to go. You know why they're not here? Because you ain't invited them. We too busy, caught up in everything else. Instead of texting and said, hey, man, I, I, I will save you a seat Sunday. Won't you come to church with me? My nephew, him and his whole family don't go to church. I ain't texted him yet. I said, man, why don't you come to church with me Sunday? Why don't you be my special guest Sunday? I'm going to text all of them this week. Man, why don't you come to church with me Sunday? I'm inviting you guys for Easter. Y'all don't, I, I ain't going to tell them they don't go to church. I ain't got to tell them. They already know. No, I ain't got to, I ain't got to do all that. Hey, man, join us on Easter, man. We're going to have a great time. And then promise them dinner. If you don't like them enough to go eat with them, get them a gift card. Y'all go on over there to uh, Golden Corral. Because there's some people I don't like enough to go eat with them. But they my family. All right. <laughs> okay. I mean, it is what it is. Don't act like I ain't, I ain't the only one. But watch this. But when they get here, say, man, I'm going to get dinner for y'all. And I give, them a, give, I give them a golden corral. They be like, man, I can't stand my uncle. <laughs> we ain't going no golden corral. No, I'm just joking, y'all. I don't have no nephews like that. That ain't my family. That's y'all family. But I have, to, I have to make it look like it's me so y'all will be comfortable. But, but invite a coworker. Hey, man, you guys not doing anything, man? Come to church with us Sunday, man. And if you want to take them to eat, or if you want to cook and invite them back to your house, that's fine, man. You think God gave you that big old pretty table to do like your mama and them did and never use it? I never understood this big old pretty table, but can't nobody eat at it? It's like, what, what, is, what is it with it? I mean, why did you buy it? You just should have put some chairs in there. It's all decorated and nobody ever uses that china? Nobody never used that plate, that fork, them gold fork. Nobody ain't never used them. It's like you're going to die and never eat or never sit at that table? What a waste. I'm sitting at every table in my house. I'm eating off of it. I ain't saving nothing. You're going to save it and your kids going to give that china to the Salvation Army. Because they don't want it. You didn't appreciate, how in the world, how y'all do that? I don't understand it. I just don't. My grandmama had a divan that was covered up. Nobody could sit on it but the insurance man when he came to collect the insurance. And as soon as she died, it was out on the curve. Nobody didn't want it. 
You better enjoy everything that the Lord gives to you every day. Here it is. As we enter into this holy week, may we reflect on the significance of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Let us remember that Jesus is not just a historical figure, like everybody wants you to think, but our living king who reigns with love, grace, and mercy. May our hearts be filled with praise and gratitude for the king who has come to save. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the events of Palm Week, this Holy Week. As this Sunday starts your triumphal entry, as this week leads you to the cross, which is the greatest love story that we could ever celebrate. how you came into this world just for me. How you hung, you bled, you died just for me. And God, never let me take that lightly. Hosanna, we celebrate you. We worship you. Lord, we need you. Can't make it without you. God, this week, help me to share you like I've never shared you before. God, help me to invite like I've never invited before. God, there are so many that need you. So, Lord, help me to give you to them. Help me to introduce you to them on this beautiful Holy Week. God, as we celebrate your last seven singing, God, as we celebrate you dying on the cross, for God, you was hung up for every one of my hang-ups, but I celebrate because you got up. So God, we honor you this week. God, move us just a little closer to thee. It's our prayer today. God, if somebody's watching me live and they're not saved, God, and they need to know you from wherever they're watching from. God, if somebody's in this sanctuary and they need to get it right with you, God, don't let them leave the way they came. But God, let them bow their heads and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Save me. Forgive me of my sin. Make me whole. Wash me. Clean me. God, I want to learn so much about you. I want to be one of your disciples. God, I want to be better, and I've been trying, but I can only be better with you. So live in me. Be my Lord. Be my guide. In Jesus' name. God, if there's somebody under the sound of my voice that they're saved, God, but they just hadn't lived like it. God, today, wrap your loving arms around them. God, let them repent and say, God, take me back to that place where I loved you and I was on fire for you. Restore them, Lord. Let them have the testimony of let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God, you brought us all into this place for such a time as this, God. You didn't let us go wandering in the forest, but God, you arrested our hearts and our minds that we might hear you again. That you might tell us how much you love us again. That we might feel your love. I thank you, Lord. None of us are so bad where you can't forgive us. So thank you today. 
Then, Lord, maybe there's somebody here today, they're saved and got their living, but they need to connect with a family of faith, a community of faith. They need a church. They need a place to grow. They need a place where a pastor and elders are watching over their souls. God, where the word of the Lord is revelant and fresh for them, where you speak to them on a regular basis, where you guide them through your word, through the preached word, through the word that's taught. I thank you for those guys today. God, life is so short. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it's but a vapor. For it's here one day and gone the next. God, not where it's an age on it. Because many won't make 90. Many won't make 80. Many won't make 70. Many won't make 60. Many won't make 50. Many won't make 40. Many won't make 30. Many won't make 20. But God, today, whenever life is over for us, we just want the testimony that our family will know that we're going to hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So thank you, Lord, for every decision that's being made in this place today to serve you on a greater level. God, this is our prayer today, and you're listening to us. As a matter of fact, somebody's prayed, and heaven is rejoicing because they said just to be close to you is their desire today. So I love you for it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you talk to the Lord and you ask him to save you, if you talk to the Lord and you ask him to restore you, God, I repent it. If you talk to the Lord today and any of that happened in your life, let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. I see those hands. Oh, my God, I see those hands. Come on, can you clap and celebrate those guys? I celebrate you. Don't ever give up. Keep pressing your way. Enemy's going to fight you. But what did I tell you? He only fights greatness. He only fights those that have a mark for greatness in the Lord. I celebrate you today. Now here's my last thing. If you said to yourself, I know I'm not connected to no church, or I am connected, I hadn't been, and I know I need to transition to a new church home. And I want to connect with the Jubilee Church. I want you to stand. I want you to meet me here because I want to pray for you. Bishop, will you pray for me? I want to put my hands to the plow at this local ministry, and I want God to use me. I want God to use my gifts, my talent. I want to get busy for the Lord. I don't, I've been busy for everybody else, but I want to be busy for the Lord. I want to be a member of the Jubilee Church. I want to, I want to join the church, as we would say in our old day. I say, connect with us. Anyone today, just stand to your feet and walk this way. Bless the Ivies. Lord, help us. Anyone else? Thank God for the Ivies. Amen. Excited for them. Anyone else today? Bishop, would you? I want to be a part of the church. Maybe you've been here and you hadn't been here in a while and you say, listen, I want to I, 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 I did leave the church, but I'm back. Anybody? I'm back. Come on. There got to be some people to say I'm back. I'm back. I want God to use me in this place for his glory. If something was to happen to me, I want this church to hold my family. I want this church to make sure that my wife is good. I want this church to pray for my kids pray for those that love me so much I don't want my family trying to find somebody to bury me in. But I want them to know that I was connected to the Jubilee Church if you're here you can walk now if there are those here that has joined our church this, in the last month 
I need you to meet uh, Sister Burns in the foyer and fill out your new member's information. Amen? Please do that today. Welcome, Ivies. Amen. This is the Ivy family. How you doing, Mother? And God just keeps sending me moms and dads. Amen. Which I'm probably about as old as they are. But we all take care of each other. Amen. They joined our uh, a senior meeting on a Thursday. They had such a good time. It was about 15 or 20 of them. I walked in there and said, man, we need to argue in here. But Dad and Mom Maline, Deacon and Mother Maline, uh, do such a great job in leading our seniors. Come on, I appreciate them. Let me say this, we can never forget those whose shoulders we're standing on. We can never forget our older people that went through a whole lot of stuff that y'all would have got killed for. All right? That took some stuff so we could enjoy what we enjoy now. Come on. So when I see older people, I know they've been through some stuff. Y'all go through the front door. They had to go to the, through the back door. They had their own water fountain and couldn't drink out the other one. Amen. Y'all get a chance to marry other folks now when they couldn't even look at them. So we got to appreciate where the Lord has brought us from. And we got to appreciate the fight that's in our seniors. <laughs> Come on. We got to appreciate that. And here at the Jubilee Church, you're going to always hear an old song. I ain't trying to turn the church into the K104 church. We're not going to remain old, old, but you're going to always hear an old song because I want them to remember where the Lord brought them from. And our young folks need to know some hymns because I'm telling you there's coming a day when your bag won't work. I know everybody's chasing the bag and everybody's hustling and everybody's doing all of this stuff. There'll come a day when your money won't work for you. Most of us will be up in heaven. But when this last evil day comes, some of our young people are going to have to deal with it. You see it now. So I praise God for those. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this beautiful couple. And I thank you for what they mean to you. And God, I thank you for sending them to the Jubilee Church. I thank you that we had a chance to talk. And thank you, Lord, how last week, where you preached, you moved. You said what you needed to say. And God, when I talked to Brother Ivory, he said, that's just what we needed. Not that they needed to hear me preach, they just needed to see God move. And God, you know our prayers every time we come in this place, it's all about you. God, you know I sit down and I want you to stand up. So God, I pray for the Ivories today. Thank you for their life. Thank you for what you've done for them. Thank you for their children. Thank you for their family. And God, we just love you now. As I lay my hands on, on mom, I thank you for restoring and healing, God. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, God, that these will be the best days of her life. Thank you for strength, God. God, I thank you for Dad Ivory and God, what you're doing in his life. Thank you, God, for who he is and what he means to you and what he means to his family. Thank you for their story, God. This long life that you've given to them. How you've blessed them. Now, Lord, I ask you to continue to bless them. God, their dreams and their visions, God, let them keep dreaming. I thank you now. And God, from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet, I ask you for strength. I ask you for healing, God. God, I thank you, Lord, that they will be so sharp at this age that they still, God, do business. They still, God, enjoy their family. In the name of Jesus, 
God, we pray jubilee blessings over their lives now that you would reveal and restore and revive and renew and reclaim in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the wisdom that they have and they'll share it with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Bless you, baby. Wouldn't it be nice if we just set our seniors? I want you. Uh, we'll get your information right after service. There's a young lady that'll be back there at the table, and she'll get your information. Yeah, you you know how to do it. Oh, you already did it. See there, they already up. He he called me and say, I I didn't look at the whole website and read everything. <laughs> I told him to fill it out. He said, I already did it. Lord, have mercy. Come on, clap your hands. God keeps adding to our church. And I thank God for wisdom today. Listen, um, uh, Wednesday night, our arts and drama ministry have a beautiful play that we're going to have on Wednesday night. Man, you guys got to come encourage our young people, encourage those that I have the gift of acting and the gift of uh, uh, drama. Uh, you guys got to be here on Wednesday night. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time. We've ordered uniforms, and it's going to be a great time. This is the first time that we've done like anything in a building like this. Uh, we'll be celebrating one year in this building, uh, April the 9th, April 10th. Amen. One year. Woo! Listen, come early next week. Amen? Because we're filling up from the front to the back. Invite your family this week and don't let them beat you here. Meet them here. All right? Amen. If you invited your uncle and his wife and his kids, don't let them come in here looking for you. You come in here and lead them to this seat. All right? That's what it's all about. Uh, there's some people that uh, we'll reserve some seats for. We ask those that uh, first time guests that wanted to be with us, we'll reserve a seat for them and we'll have those reserved. And then first Sunday, everybody say first Sunday. You don't have to cook anything. We're doing dinner on the ground. Right after service, we're going to go and celebrate our birthday party. We'll be 21 years of age. Tell somebody we grown now. Uh, we'll celebrate 21 years. April the 6th is our birthday. We're celebrating Sunday, April the 7th. Uh, there's going to be ribs and chicken and links and brisket and mac and cheese and beans and green beans and potato salad tea and water i'm just telling you the menu and after service we're gonna we're gonna leave out of here we're gonna have a tent set up in the back table and chairs outside and inside uh DJ Fonzo is going to be on the box. They don't call it the box no more. That's old, lady. He's going to be rocking the reels, <laughs> whatever y'all do now. And we're going to have a good time. So listen here. Don't cook nothing that day. I'm not fixing no to goes. I'm just telling you now. If you got to go, you have to take it out there. And when you hit belt line, it's going to be all in your seats. We want you to stay on this campus and eat and have a good time. We're not like your Uncle Nim. We're not going to run out of ribs. We're not going to run out of links, sausage. We're not going to run out of nothing. And we're going to enjoy what the Lord has done. All right? That's first Sunday, y'all. You can dress down casual if you want to. You can dress up if you want to. We're going to have a good time, all right? We'll have tables reserved for our seniors. They don't have to fight for a place to sit. We'll have two tables already reserved for all of our seniors on the inside unless they won't go outside. Let's pray for great weather that day. Amen? I want the weather to be nice, and we'll stay there from 12 to, to we all go home. Our deacons are ready. Our culinary ministry is ready. We are ready to celebrate 21 years of the Lord's faithfulness to the Jubilee Church. We started over there in those three buildings in 2003 
April the 6th was our first service. And God blessed us to buy these five acres and build this building in 21 years. Come on, church. We are celebrating. Invite your family, your friends, because it's family reunion, y'all, first Sunday. I thank God for you. Now, let us give as unto the Lord. Today, many of you have already given, and I want to bless your giving. I thank God for all of those that have made a pledge uh, this year. Uh, the last time I checked, we were at 98 people that had made a pledge of $1,000. Come on, y'all cannot clap in right. What we have said for the end of the year, uh, at the end of the year, New Year's Eve, we're going to put the number of what, come in, what have come in right here on the screen. And we know it will be $100,000 plus. And we're going to take that and put, uh, uh, put it toward our, our, uh, our debt cancellation for this building. We're dropping it on there. That'll help us save a whole lot of interest. That'll help us uh, get this note down. All right? So that's what we're doing. We're going to do that every year. And I'm praying to God that we will be out of this debt. It's $2.1 million. If anybody want to write the check, I'll be in the back. Y'all laughing, but I'm not. You don't know what that person next to you have. Y'all think I'm not joking. I believe I'm going to say that one day and somebody going to say, all right, Reverend, I'll meet you. Come on, y'all. I don't know what your dreams and what your vision is, but I pray that your, your, your business jump off. So we're going to celebrate. And then uh, for uh, our memorial fountain, whatever gift you give to the church for our birthday, I want everybody to prepare a special gift and put it on your envelope, put it in. Uh, you, when you give online, put it there, birthday. Or uh, but it's, it's a way you can indicate it in there. Uh, as many that could, give $100. Uh, we already have $1,200. Only thing, we, we was going to do uh, $10,000 and we're gonna install our memorial fountain out there. I'll have a picture of it next week because I want you guys to see it. It is beautiful. But it will be a place where we can go and remember those, all of our members that have gone before us uh, these last 21 years, and then your family members that have gone to be with the Lord. It'll just be a place, I mean, it is a beautiful uh, uh, water, water, uh, fountain. I mean, it's, it's bad, y'all. It's bad. And it's going to make our outside right there. It's going to be beautiful, y'all. So let's give toward that. Uh, I, I'm giving five. We already had five. And then one of our members uh, that's out of town sent 200. So we already have 1,200. We almost there, y'all. So whatever gift you give, make sure you mark it so we can put it aside. I'll tell you how much came in. And as soon, uh, we'll go to work on it. Uh, the company will go to installing it. So by summertime, we're praying that it'll be up and running. And, and uh, it'll be just a beautiful place of remembrance, okay? Uh, my mom was a part of the church. My dad was a part of the church. So many that have gone before us that gave. And we're standing on their shoulders. Amen. Amen. Even those that have gone and no, no longer part of the ministry. We're still standing on their shoulders, whether they served here a year or two, three, four, ten. We're still standing on their shoulders, and I, as a pastor, yet honor them. I ain't mad at nobody. I still honor them today because the season that they were here, God used them, and I am so appreciative that God allowed us to meet them. Amen? You'll never find a bitter pastor in me. It only makes me better. Amen? Give your attention to these announcements. Hey, Jubilee, what an amazing time we've had today in service. We pray that you will join us again next week. Here are your weekly announcements.
Join Christian Education starting at 8.30 a.m. Our masterclass for the month of March will be on service with Kevin Allen in the Jubilee Event Center, Continental Breakfast included. Talk with the Bishop Tuesdays is open every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. For scheduling, please contact the Jubilee office. Join us every Wednesday morning for our prayer call. Be empowered as you start the day from 6 to 6.15 a.m. Dow 805-706-4725. No access code is needed. Our 2024 pledge is growing strong, Jubilee, and we want everyone to be a part. Make your 2024 pledge today. If you are interested in being a part of our arts ministry for our upcoming Easter production, please see Sister Shea Clark in the foyer following service. It's time to celebrate our risen Savior. Next week, join us Easter Sunday, March 31st at 10 a.m. for our resurrection celebration. Bring your family, friends, and let's celebrate that our Savior lives. We look forward to seeing you. It's time to celebrate our 21st anniversary jubilee. Listen, we are celebrating the whole month of April. On first Sunday, April 7, immediately after service, we will have Sunday dinner on campus. Come celebrate all that the Lord has done in these 21 years. Calling New Jubilee family, we are thrilled to announce our next new family orientation will be on Saturday, April 13th from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in the Jubilee Event Center. Please register in the Jubilee app or jubileecc.org. For those interested in being baptized, we are having our baptism celebration service on Sunday, May 5th at 6 p.m., Matthew 28 and 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please register in the Jubilee app or jubileecc.org. Download the Jubilee app, stay connected and in the know about what's going on at the Jubilee Church, available in the App Store. These are your weekly Jubilee announcements. We look forward to seeing you at one of these empowering events. Peace and blessings for your week. Let us all stand. How did you like a the message today, the, the greatest what, entry of all time. Oh my God, we thank God for that. Now, with uplifted hands toward heaven, what I say unto one, I say unto all watch, pray, live holy every day. Now, shake somebody's hand and say, I love you, and Jesus, you too. God bless you today.